Welcome back to the X231 series, everybody. Here's the piece that we've been waiting on, and I had to make sure I had it positioned upright so you could read uh, the speedy sleeve for the vertical shaft over there. This was the delay. We also had one of the new old stock Timkins that we found on eBay show up, and um, I took it out of the package enough to make sure it looked good. It's still covered in some sticky Cosmoline. We're liking that. We're just waiting on the uh, two races that I bought to go with this, and we don't need those now anyhow. We can wait until the bolster comes back before. That would be an issue. So I think we've got enough stuff here finally to proceed. So here's what I did to prep the vertical shaft. Where that seal surface was worn, I built it up with some JB Weld a couple of days ago, and it's had a lot of time to fully cure. And um, well, Speedy Sleeves, they recommend sometimes to apply your epoxy like that and then drive them on before it sets up. I do things a little differently. I will throw it on there, let it fully cure, and then we'll take this out to the South Bend lathe. We've got a good live center hole right there. We can put it in the fore jaw on this end. It's gonna be a bit unbalanced, but we'll slow the lathe down and we will re-true this whole surface and possibly even size it so it's a little more conducive to the sleeve going on. And this is our piece right here. It'll go down like that, drive on. This is what I like about speedy sleeves. They always give you this short little driver can. And to this day, this is the shortest shaft I've ever had to drive a speedy sleeve onto yet. They just never work. That's okay, they're kind of handy for throwing miscellaneous parts in. So with all of that ready, let's head out to the other room. I've got the sleeve on here because I want to uh, size it from time to time as we do the machining. So, take that back to where I'm happy. Let's just back this off a little bit. There we go. Lock it down, seat it back. Yeah. Good purchase with the four jaw. Up at the front. It'll clear, it'll spin. And to finish the setup, I love this old lathe. Flat belt driven, you can see it's really loose right now. It has this over centering mechanism on it that pivots this whole upper assembly where the switch, the motor, and the drive pulleys are. Flip that down, tightens the belt, and you have your drive. But being that we are one-to-one -one flat belt, well, it's going to be a little bit fast, so we can slow it down by back gearing it. So we've got the drive pulley here, rotates the chuck, but this is a spring-loaded pin right here with a slot. You pull it out and drop it down like that, and that, that basically disconnects the chuck from the pulley. So the back gear lever is back here, Engage that, so now you can see we're like in a geared down state, all right? So that should be a lot better for the driving. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that because otherwise it's, it's gonna cant that way anyhow when we uh, start it up, but we should be at a manageable speed now. That'll do just fine. Just going slow here today. We're not going to get crazy with it. We don't have that long of a cut to do, so I'm just creeping in. There, we're just starting to shave epoxy. And remember, we're not that out of round. That's just how out of round I applied it <laughs> with my finger.
Feels like it's going to be an excellent fit. And here's our result. The epoxy filling that old wear groove that was put in by the old seal. And we also reduced the overall diameter of that surface by about three thousandths of an inch. That is going to put it much closer to the optimal installation diameter for the new speedy sleeve. So the next problem, how do we get the sleeve driven all the way down that shaft? I did some looking around the shop and y'all ain't gonna believe what I found. This. It's actually the oil filter can from the bottom of X231's engine. I was like, you know, that looks like it might fit that sleeve, but look at this. It's like it was made just for this job. <laughs> you couldn't have got any better. Oh, I couldn't believe it. I can hit it with this mallet, so that's not going to damage it at all. And it's a little bit big to hook the flange on the bottom of the sleeve. No worries. I made a couple of special washers for the job. So this, uh, this thinner one will hook that flange and easily accept the base of that can. And I'm going to drive this on pretty much until the flange contacts, but then I want to get the rest of this a little bit deeper because we don't have a lot of vertical real estate there and we pull that flange off the bottom. That's going to take about a third of it away. So the next washer will be this one. Once I pull that flange off, this one will go on the top of what's sticking up and then we can drive it the rest of the way with our special service tool. Look at that. It just could not have worked out any better, at least on paper. Let's put it into practice. And of course our usual light coating of some Loctite sleeve retainer on there as well. Both surfaces just to give it a little bit extra help. So we'll assemble our fancy tool. All right, let's have a look. Uh, this has got to come down first. Now we're high over here. Okay, bottomed out, I think with the inside of the can on the end of the shaft. So let's peel that uh, sleeve out of there. I think what I'm going to do, see if we can't get under it a little bit. Okay. There we are. That darn telephone is ruining my shot again. Oh well, drama. YouTube drama. drama is can I get this off of here without cutting myself on it <laughs> okay page one complete now we can throw the other washer on there and we can take it the rest of the way I like that a lot better. We still have to trim this to uh, height because the sleeve is a lot taller than 
the real estate that we had to work with. But that looks good. Okay, everybody, we've got our ceiling surface renewed. So that means we can put the rest of this together, finally. We begin with the seal that's in the bottom of the bearing cage, and we find the seal number right there, and we will put it in register with the casting number because we are not uncivilized after all. According to my measurements, we're going to want to be about an eighth of an inch below the top of the casting. That's to get the lip of the seal to line in best with the speedy sleeve that we installed. A little bit more. I think that's good. Yep, we're there. And now this is where I get in my own head a little bit. I kept looking at the witness mark from the old bearing on the shaft right here, and you could see that the bearing race only went down that far and it stopped. And I'm accustomed to bearings going all the way down and like hitting the shoulder right down here so they have a firm backdrop, if you will. But this is not set up that way. Uh, it turns out that is supposed to be a floating fit bearing down there. Only the top bearing is supposed to be a, a solid press fit. So that makes me feel a little bit better because I, you remember I took the prototype shaft out of the bearing by hand, but I had to press the production apart. So I did some more looking at the production to do some more comparing. And it makes a lot of sense now because after I've got the production piece cleaned up, you can slide that lower bearing by hand as well. So that was just um, kind of rusted and corroded on. That's why we had to press that. And I was looking at it all wrong. Um, I was looking at it as if this would be like a traditional wheel bearing setup. So this would be the spindle and typically your back bearing would go all the way against the shoulder like that and then your front bearing would be drawn up with the nut and the washer on the outside until all end play was taken up. This is opposite. Instead of being positioned like that, these bearings are positioned the other way. All right, so that makes sense that this has to float down there and land wherever it wants to land and this one is the one that's pressed solidly to the top of the shaft. And you can kind of visualize that with the production unit here. As you draw these flange bolts up, that's going to raise the bearing cage, which pushes the bearing and compresses it against the sleeve and the gear. And the gear is limited in its travel by the large snap ring at the top. So once the gear can't drift anymore, it's gonna hit the snap ring and that causes the whole shaft to start raising up and the bearing that's up on top here gets drawn up into the race that's in the bolster and then you just uh, change your shim thickness or gasket thickness or both to get your desired end play or preload and the large nut that goes on top of the sector gear on the prototype unit here accomplishes the same task as the snap ring so simple as that Let's take the bearing cage and drop it on. Make sure the quadrant here is in register with the hole where that steering stop peg will live. And even though I've got some grease on the lip of the seal, I'll still start it very gently onto the, the flange down there. All right, just like that. And then the bearing, and I've packed that full of grease. That's just an extra step that I think is worth doing. And this one's a little bit tighter on the shaft than the production was, but you can tap it right on. So sleeve goes on next, like that. And then our sector gear. And because this one isn't just like a single key and can only go on in one position, we just need to make sure that the back side away from the actual gear face is pointing and once again towards that, uh, that stop bolt hole, so. 
it starts on just like that. And we can use that to tap the bearing down. Like so. Next up, the full over lock, which, which is my favorite part. I can't even lie about that. And then the nut. And here's a tip for um, a nut that's this large going on to a lock. Smear some grease on the back side of it because when you go to cinch it down, if it's dry, it's going to be trying to twist on that lock pretty hard and pull it out of position. This one's rather tough to get started on the threads, especially because these threads are just cut into the, the tops of those splines. I thought I had it. Nope. I'll try to reverse until it drops in. Hmm. This is live, folks. There we go. Got it started. And I don't think we have to be awfully tight with this. We'll just pop it a little bit. That's about all I want to do. Kind of ridiculous when you have to adapt up to a socket that's bigger than the, <laughs> than the impact is. Sometimes you need to. Let's go for a second downward fold too. Not so much because we have to, but because we can. So we've got the internal splines plus the folded up portion right here that's locking the nut to the shaft. But added insurance, the extra fold down right here is just more um, counterclockwise rotation prevention because if any of this is going to start rotating, that is going to have to climb up over the edge of the gear first. So just locks it down even better. And the last piece, we'll get our steering stop put in. We'll do a check, stop, stop, good rotation, yeah, I like it, we're done. I decided the last thing I might as well do today is get all the hardware, good Rockford bolts, new lock washers, cleaned up and prepped for that bearing cage. So. We leave the top bearing off until we get the bolster back and we can start doing some measuring from this flange surface to that upper bearing race pocket and try to decide what they were doing with that funny shimming and if we we're going to have to do something along those lines. So that's as far as we get on the pivot. It can join the clutch and flywheel system on the bench. We've got some nicely looking refurbed components. If we're still waiting on that front bolster, um, I think we can get into maybe like the pedestal drop down and the front wheel hubs and try to figure out why X231 has that one front hub that's seized. It doesn't spin. So um, we also have a couple of uh, brief detours that we're going to have to take here coming up very soon from X231. Those of you that follow the channel know that we're waiting on uh, painting weather for the Farm All H. As you can see, we've got... Um, the filler put in where necessary on the hood and we're going to uh, keep on going with the grill and finish prepping the gas tank because as soon as I get painting weather, maybe within the next week, we might be trying to finish up the red on this tractor. So exciting times, always plenty to do, and I thank you all for watching. Whatever we get into next, I hope to see you back.